Okay, what's up, y'all? I just finished my sprint. Not my sprint. <coughs> my run. And uh, since I'm walking to cool down and let my muscles absorb some of this lactic acid back up because I don't want to be sore. Uh, figure I come talk to y'all. Now, usually, I'll just get up on these videos and start talking about <coughs> spiritual concepts because I'm I'm very practical when it comes to magic. Call it the nerd in me, okay? Like I know what I know, do what I do. But <coughs> for me, it also has to make logical sense to a certain degree. So most of my unless ants um I don't really just get turn on the camera and be like, let's talk spiritual concepts. It's usually some type of inspiration or something that has happened that <coughs> makes me want to uh, speak on a particular topic. So today I want to talk about polarization. Now, polarization is a, a universal law. Okay. It's a universal law. And it is important and what I'm noticing is in a lot of these so called spiritual circles there is a lot of polarization going on and it is <coughs> in my personal opinion detrimental to the growth of people who actually practice spirituality or occultism because what we have is <coughs> People who really haven't received a call to actually stand out and do this work, but they're claiming that they have this calling, this power, this authority. And honestly, if you look at folks' lives and how they conduct themselves, you can tell whether somebody has a calling or not. People that have callings on their life don't uh, live <coughs> like the rest of the masses, okay? They are a little strange and they are a little different. <coughs> People that have a calling tend to make others uncomfortable because they tend to do things that are outside of the norm, outside of tradition. They tend to break social norms. So, because what happens is, just like with religion, Christianity, uh, <coughs> any other religions, any of them. Excuse me, I'm still recovering from my run. In any of these religions, there is a dogma that comes with it, okay? When you're dealing with religious dogma, it tends to institute a level or an expectation of polarization amongst the followers of that particular religion. And everybody else. <coughs> it tells you that you are part of this basically easy class of people who are <coughs> more righteous, more supreme than other groups of people. And what is happening is we have all these people who have looked at some of the extras for spirituality because spirituality ain't candles and sage and incantations and I it's more the spirituality than that. It's a personal journey. But you have people that have seen some of the <coughs> extras of spirituality and decided they like it. Now they hot shit on the market. And 
everybody follows them. Meanwhile, nobody's improving. <coughs> nobody's reaching a destination. Nobody's stepping out of the comfort zone because they're making it where if you're exceptional in being normal, then that is the mark of your success. You don't reach a destiny and you purpose that way. <coughs> but this is where polarization comes in because when you come out of these religions, you have people bringing their religious minds and ideologies into spirituality. They sharing it with other people. <coughs> and the crazy part is I've never seen so much judgment over people as I have seen in these spiritual circles. And that's just unfortunate because it's just like people complain about the church. <coughs> people are turning spirituality into something like a church. And people complain that you're supposed to come to the church and be free, but people talk about you, people judge you. People are judging folks' spiritual journey. When you step out of your comfort zone, now if somebody walking around and they want to be sexually promiscuous and put it into a spiritual context or whatever, oh, that's fine because, oh, that's sex magic and you can manifest, you know, but 